Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy. This is a custom knife, a custom regulator by a guy named Cody Atzler. Um, Cody's a young knife maker, and, um, you know, it's a very interesting knife. In terms of price, it's kind of tough to say. I did a trade for this guy with some money involved, but roughly speaking, I'm around 900 bucks into it, which is certainly high, but, um... There you go. I So I don't have a, a, a concrete price on this guy. And they really vary on what they sell from, from him being a custom. Uh, and Cody, uh, to his credit, I've been talking with him throughout all this and really asked for an honest review. And that takes some stone. So, uh, hey, well done there, Cody. So, uh, size comparison-wise, here is, as always, your Spyderco Delica. Here is your Ontario Rat Number 1. And the, the blade length is about analogous on these guys. Um, and the Ontario Rat Number 2. Of course, uh, let's see here. What else do I have, Andy? Shirogarov Neon, the uh, Grimsmon Norseman, another on the custom end of things, and, um, oh, what the heck, ZT452CF, another carbon fiber sort of knife. So, okay, there's your size comparison. Let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this particular knife. So on the good side, um, first and foremost, the materials on this are very, very nice. Um, the blade itself is a Damasteel, uh, which is by the Damasteel Company, and it goes from a nice little Gustav Klimt sort of pattern over here to something that looks a little bit more Damascus-y when it's ground out, but whatever it is, it's it's very attractive. I appreciate this quality very much of this blade. It, it's it's a gorgeous, gorgeous blade. So that's nice. Um, other materials, the titanium itself is quite nice. It's It's got a very nice satiny sort a feel to it that I appreciate. It's not a really common finish, but whatever it is he did looks great. The pivot is nice as well. You can see here it's a sort of metallic-y look to it. Very, very excellent. Big fan of the pivot there. Um, the carbon fiber is nice as well. It's a lightning strike carbon fiber, which means it's got little copper wires embedded inside the carbon fiber, which is it's nice. I appreciate that very much. So that's good. Um, and then the clip on this guy is zirconium. Uh, which is, uh, you can see it's a little bit scratched up from when I've carried this a couple of times, but uh, nonetheless, it's a nice surface. It's a nice material, and it's kind of neat to say, hey, look, this is zirconium. That's not an element a lot of people see on a regular basis. So uh, that's that's kind of a beautiful thing. Um, it's also got some nice details. As I pointed out in the disassembly video, um, where the carbon fiber meets the titanium would be very easy to just do a vertical cut, but Cody did this right in that he nested it in there. He put a... Uh, uh, an angle in the milling there, which he then matched with the carbon fiber. That's a nice little touch. It's a good detail. Well done. The clip is internally screwed, so the clip screws, as you saw in the disassembly, actually come up through the bottom, which is nice itself. Um, it has a detent ball ramp, which is good and helps to make the action on this guy as incredible as it is. And, you know, overall, a lot of, the, even this little, uh, the little drops off here are very nicely done. The milling here is well done, and it feels pretty decent in the hand as a result of it. Um, th there's a lot of really good there. Uh, so, there's that. Um, the other thing that I gotta say is that the, the Damasteel, uh, you know, I mentioned this in the materials section, but the polish he put on it is actually very, very, very nice. You can see here that there's actually a mirroring sort of effect to the Damasteel itself, and so you can see the uh, charging cable for the phone that's filming this right now reflected in the blade. It's not very often that you see a finish like that, and I appreciate it very much. It's it's a very, very neat thing. So um, that's your good. The materials on this guy are really excellent. There are some really good details here, and this blade finish really blew me away. Um, let's talk about the grate here. What's really great about this knife, above all else, is the action. This knife is incredibly smooth. It drops shut in a way that's second only to the Grimsmo Norseman, uh, which is just an incredible, incredible drop shot sort of feeling. But this guy falls shut under its own weight with very, very little resistance. And depending on, you know, how you've got it dialed in, it's 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 just spectacular. Um, I love, love, love the action on this knife. The deploy is great as well. The detent is very, very strong. There's no question as to whether this is going to flip properly. Um, and just, it's got this incredible fall shot sort of pivot. It's the second best pivot I've ever handled. And I've handled some Thorburn Customs here. Only behind the Norseman, which is just damn good. So um, that's what's really great about this knife, is that Cody has absolutely nailed the action on this flipper knife. He, he's got it absolutely magnificently done here. So I appreciate the heck out of that. That's that's really, really great. Um, let's talk about the bad. 
So on the bad side, um, there is no sharpening choil here. And with a plunge grind as severe as this guy, after a little bit of sharpening, you're going to have a problem with that. Um, it's not the end of the world, but it is something that bugs me a little bit. Next issue is probably not an issue in the grand scheme of things, but the uh, scale screws go straight into the titanium here. Um, the only time that that's a disadvantage is if those holes were to strip out, suddenly you've got a problem. You've got to send the knife back to Cody, as opposed to in a knife where there's either a screw on either side and a backspacer in the middle, or some kind of a, a sex bolt, if you will, where you can just swap out the bolt uh, entirely. Cody could just send me a new... It's a slight issue, but it's really common on a lot of high-end knives. I'm not dragging them over the coals on that one. Um, there are some details, though, that are missing on the, the, the higher-end fit and finish. I mean, if he's charging 900 uh, bucks for a knife, there are things he needs to be fixing here. For instance, these clip screws, I don't get why these aren't blind. A blind screw is like on the Norseman here. Um, you've got no sign of those screws underneath there, whereas on this guy, the screws come all the way through. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me why he did it that way. I'm sure it's very difficult to do those blind screws, but at this kind of price point, you need to start thinking about details like that. Um, other things that are a little bit more problematic. Um, for instance, there are gaps between the titanium and the carbon fiber and little protuberances. If you run your finger along here, it actually catches on the carbon fiber right here. It's something I pointed out a couple of times to Cody, um, but he never fixed. I'm sure you could fix it at home with a little bit of sandpaper and a respirator because carbon fiber is nasty. But nonetheless, um, that's a little detail that's going to be a problem and you're starting to get into your really high end, as Cody's seeming to do. Um, there were some gaps uh, here and there. The backspacer here had some gaps, and when he sent it back to me the first time, and again, we'll get there, there were huge gaps. But nonetheless, um, that's okay, but at this price range, it's getting to be less okay. The flipper tabs edges are completely unfinished. Um, it feels like this just came off the water jet that way, and uh, maybe it wasn't water jet at all, but either way, um, they're, they're on the sharp side, um, very much so. As opposed to a lot of your higher-end knives will have some kind of a rounding or a chamfering of that surface, and I think it would have made this knife a little bit more pleasurable to work with if that was rounded or chamfered. Note there's also no jimping. That's a design choice. It's not a big problem, but it might be for somebody if you're working in the Vaseline factory. Um, another thing that kind of I don't get is the uh, exposed stop pin hole here. The stop pin goes all the way through on both sides, and I don't understand that choice. Um, maybe there's a good reason for it. I'd love to hear about it, but unfortunately, you know, it makes what could be a very clean knife. There's kind of a weird little freckle on it, and maybe it's the, uh, oh, what the heck was her name? There was a supermodel with the, f uh, the freckle. Um, I don't know. I don't know my supermodels, but either way, maybe that's, you know, a design choice that Cody has chosen to do, but it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Um, but, you know, hey, whatever. Um, and then finally, uh, two issues that are maybe bigger issues than all the other little nitpicks that I've brought up so far. First off, the uh, zirconium takes scratching pretty well here. I didn't carry this knife all that much, but one day that I did, unfortunately, I leaned up against the brick wall, and it just did a tune on the, the side of this clip. And I noticed it afterwards, and it's zirconium, and I think he's done some kind of an acid wash on there and an orange peel, but whatever it is, it shows scratches pretty readily. The other issue is that the uh, the finger choil on this guy is a little bit large, and it's a strange finger choil. Usually a finger choil has some kind of a, a gap in there so that your finger falls in there and stays put. This guy, the finger choil, if, if we can call it that, this portion of the blade, whatever, is still there's a slope towards the blade, which means that if your finger slips at all, it's going right onto the blade, and there's nothing stopping it from doing that. So I think this would have been a much more compelling finger choil if he'd pulled it back a little bit further, and it could have also served as a sharpening choil, which would have been a two-for-one sort of deal. I suggested this um, in dealing with one of the other problems, but, uh, you know, whatever. He decided not to go there. But I do think that either this could have been eliminated entirely, you just bring the plunge grind further back, that would have been fine, or you carve this in a little bit more and make it a little bit more secure as a finger choil. It's comfortable enough gripped like this, but I don't know, at the end of the day, not a huge, huge fan of that little area there. So that's your bad. A lot of nitpicks and a couple of little issues. I mentioned a bunch of little details in there, but I don't like the fact that the clip shows the screw marks. Uh, I'm sorry, the uh, clip shows the scrape marks, and I'm not a big fan of this finger choil being in there. Um, those, uh, those aren't really good things, coupled with the details at this price point. Finally, let's talk ugly. 
Okay, so there are a couple of ugly things here. First off, to me, the pocket clip is ugly, and that's because, uh, well, a good clip needs to have a little bit of spring to it. Um, you know, something that, uh, when you put your pants through the clip, basically, um, the clip needs to lift up a little bit to accommodate it, because pants tend to have a thick ridge and then thinner fabric. This clip doesn't spring, flat out. I mean, you can lift it up a little tiny bit, but it's, it's just, it's not a spring clip at all. And so instead what you do with this is that you force your pants to compress underneath the clip and then they come to rest here. And then when you pull the knife out of your pocket, it's a real battle because unfortunately you can't grip it like this because that increases the clip tension. And so you're left gripping it like this. And that's a big problem for the reason we'll talk about next. But regardless, that makes this knife very, very hard to carry because unfortunately the, the clip is just, it's not going to work well for you a hundred percent. It's just way too stiff. It's kind of a rookie mistake. A lot of people make that mistake when they're starting off with milled clips. And it's a rare milled clip that's really got the spring tension down. But this is particularly bad. It bugs the crap out of me. So uh, that's the first bit of ugly. The second issue is really bad, and that's the fact that the blade is right up to the edge of the scales here. Um, on a folding knife, the rule number one is when the knife is closed, it shouldn't cut anything open, and unfortunately, this knife violates that. It's hard to show, but when you, if you watch the disassembly, I show it off there. You have maybe a millimeter or two, maybe a millimeter of clearance between the edge of the blade, the edge of the scales, and the edge of the blade, and that means that for somebody with smaller fingers like myself. Um, or without huge calluses, if you grab this knife in this way with your finger, it will cut you open. And in fact, the very first day I tried to carry this knife, trying to get this overly stiff clip out of there, I grabbed the knife like this, and I pulled, and it just sliced my thumb open. And it was ugly, ugly, ugly. It was one of the worst cuts I've ever gotten off of a pocket knife. And it wasn't so bad, but it still really sucks, because once your thumb is cut open, you use it all the damn time. But anyways, so it sliced me open really good. And that's, that's really, really ugly. Um, and so that led down a whole road, but Cody knows this and he acknowledges this. In one of our conversations on the Instagram, he said, yeah, I kind of know that's a problem with that model. I'm going to focus on another model that doesn't have that issue. But unfortunately, that, that's, <laughs> it's not good enough for a knife that's actually got that issue. So, um... That's the second bit of ugly, is that this knife will cut you open if you're not careful, and with that clip together, it's it's a brutal kind of thing. So it makes me very reluctant to carry this knife, and very, very, very careful when I do. So, uh, finally, let's get to the third bit of ugly. The really ugly thing is that, you know, you got these two big problems, the blade and the clip. I gave Cody money to fix both of those things, and he didn't fix either of them, on two different occasions. Let me do a little bit of story time here. Basically, when it first cut me open, I shot him a message on the Instagram saying, you know, hey, Cody, um, you know, I used to have a little backspacer there. I just cut my knife open on the, I uh, cut myself open on your knife. Can we put in a backspacer? And I, uh, I said, you know, how much is it going to cost? Because I don't think he needs to work for free. He's a young knife maker. There's no sense doing that to him. So he quotes me 55 bucks to fix that. And I also said, will you fix the clip? Yeah, sure. And, you know, putting a little letter with it, a couple of other things like the carbon fiber issue here. Um, I get it back the very first time and he'd removed the milling in here, which was really grabbing in the pocket. And that's, that's good. That improved the clip a little bit. It didn't change the clip at all. Didn't make it any springier, but he, it, it's a little bit better now. But bigger deal is that he put in a backspacer, and the backspacer actually extended out about yay far, and it completely prevented the blade from being touched, and that's great. But the thing is, whenever I close the knife, you could actually hear the blade edge hit the backspacer, and that's ugly. And in fact, if you had the knife closed just in your pocket, you could hear it scraping back and forth a little bit on that. When I mentioned it to him in another Instagram message, he said, well, yeah, but only if you, you know, uh, close the knife with any force. It's a drop shot knife. That's kind of hard not to do. And one of the very few things that a folding knife should do is, well, not rub the edge up against something that'll dull it regularly. So that little comment implies that he saw that that was an issue, that it was playing against the backspacer, but he didn't really care. It was good enough, so he shipped it out. That's ugly in and of itself. But to his credit, he then said, you know, yeah, sure, okay, I'll fix that for you, no problem. And I again said, you know, and the clip's still a little stiff, and I'm happy to have you regrind it. I'm not. That's no problem. And so he took the knife back. About two weeks later, I get the knife back in the mail. No, no communication in the time between. And he'd done nothing with the clip. He'd done nothing with the carbon fiber there. But um, he did cut off 
this part of the backspacer where it was hitting the blade. Which unfortunately then puts me right back in the same position as I was before. The blade is just way too close to the edge. And so I shot him another message on the Instagram and he said, well, you know, sure, but the thing is I can't make my thumb hit the blade no matter what you do. But there are slightly different thumbs out there and I don't think I'm entirely out of line here. And so, uh, you know, I, I said, what else can we do? He has said, I'm sorry, there's nothing more I can do. And honestly, that's, that's really ugly. Um, because I'm not a knife maker, but I'm pretty sure there's something else you can do here. This is something where you can regrind the blade. You just grind it a little bit further back. You move the surface of the blade a little bit this way, the very edge, that way in your grind, and you, the problem's going to be solved. Yeah, it's going to take time, sure, and re-etching the damage steel is not going to be fun, but had he said to me, you know, Nick, I'm sorry, but that's going to be a much more expensive fix. If, you know, would you do a hundred bucks for a regrind? I'll do it however you'd like. Then great, sure, yeah, he's, I'd be happy. But just saying, yeah, there's nothing more I can do was really, really ugly. It's just, no, you know what, I'm done with this. Yeah, it's a problem. And then, he, like I said, the audacity is saying, yeah, I'm going to focus on another model that doesn't have that issue in the future. Like, oh, okay. Well, good for them in the future. But at the end of the day, he took my money and he didn't fix the issue. And if he's not going to go, the, the if he's not going to do it, if he's not going to fix the problem, then don't take the damn money. And so I now have a knife that is very nice, but that I don't feel comfortable carrying. The couple of times I did carry this guy for review, I was super, super careful. I carried it with nothing else in that pocket. And I, when I went in to grab it, I made sure that I was only pulling out by this portion so I didn't get myself cut. But that's that's really ugly, and I've now poured 55 bucks more into a knife that I'm already way too deep into for nothing. And that's that's just, that's really ugly to me. And, you know, you can't take money to fix something and then not fix it. I don't know. Um, so that's, that's the ugly about this knife. The pocket clip is way too stiff to be really well usable. The blade is really exposed so people with smaller fingers can very easily cut themselves open. And Cody took money to fix both and didn't fix either of them. So, uh, let's go to the final conclusion here. Look, at some level, this is the hottest review I've ever done because, you know, I always try to be fair to my viewers by pitching everything you know, by, by saying what needs to be said, and fair to the maker by not just, you know, crapping on him based on my own emotions. And emotionally speaking, I got strong feelings about this. I am not at all happy about how this worked out. I'm really disappointed. But the knife itself is weird in and of itself, because it's at one level it's really great, and at another level it's really crappy. On the great side, it's got this incredible action, it's got great materials, he's gotten so many things right here that it's really frustrating that he's got these basic things really wrong, and that he refuses to fix them, even when paid. And So the end result of this, I mean, maybe my fingers are just too small, and my pants are just too thick, but the end result is a, a gorgeous knife that's very expensive, and that just doesn't get any pocket time because it's a little dangerous in that process and and that, that's really that's really disappointing and then my whole experience with him just kind of soured the pot a little bit further but i mean my ultimate conclusion on cody's work is that he's 19 years old it's not an excuse but it's an explanation i mean at some level it's incredible that he's doing this well at 19 i mean he's got some of the hardest parts really down pat but it's very clear that he is still learning his craft. He's still working on the details. He's still making some rookie mistakes. And his customer service is still way off of where it needs to be. Again, in my opinion, maybe you all will disagree. But, um, and you know, unfortunately, his actions throughout this process have leaving me wondering whether he's actually given really a damn about what he's putting out. Because that's, that, I don't know, it would annoy the crap out of me to, to, to know that that was out there and something that I made. But whatever, maybe I'm a different person. Just a sense of, eh, it's good enough. So I guess keep an eye on Cody Utzler. I mean, if he's able to do this now at 19, what is he going to be able to do at 29 or 39? He may well turn out to be one of the best knife makers out there in the future. Or, you know, he may never get over these issues and may always produce inconsistent quality. I don't know. It's a question of how he learns, how he grows, etc. But for right now, honestly, I wouldn't buy another Rutzler knife. Um, you might, and, you know, I think if the price is right, you, you can do that. But know that what you're getting here is not a perfectly finished custom knife that you might from a, a, 
uh, more experienced maker, but you're getting a pretty exceptional early effort. You need to walk under, you know, walk into this with your expectations adjusted because, unfortunately, right now Cody needs to adjust his expectations a little bit too, and you need to double check for issues, especially the big issues, because it's very possible, at least in my experience, that they might not get fixed. So, that's where I land. I'm ultimately disappointed, and I'm probably not doing anything else from Cody, but at the same time, if you're loving his style, and you can double-check these things ahead of time, you could do a lot worse. I mean, he's, he's, he's still uh, an impressive maker. Maybe I'm being soft here, I don't know. At the end of the day, I'm just a softy. But, uh, yeah, there you go. So, that's the Cody Utzler Regulator. Incredible knife, and deeply flawed knife all at once. Such is life. Ah, uh, have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of the day, and Cody, please, work on your craft, keep it up, because I really hope that in 20 years, I'll be singing your highest of praises. Bye now.